The coronavirus pandemic is creating concerns ahead of the 2020 election. With no official end in sight to the crisis, there are questions about whether voters will be able to head to the polls to cast their ballot in November. Well, this realization has caused some states to consider switching to an online voting format. A recent article published by Politico investigates the potential security risks of going ahead and switching to online voting and how it could impact elections moving forward. Elliot, or Elliot, Eric Geller joins me now. He's a cybersecurity reporter at Politico and also the author of that article. Eric, thank you for joining us. So, you know, four years ago, Russian interference in the 2016 election prompted really this nationwide effort to secure paper-based voting systems. How has this current coronavirus pandemic sort of upended that effort? A lot of counties were, uh, are, are still in the process right now of picking out the voting machines that they want to buy and then setting up the contracts. And some of them, I'm sure, were planning to roll them out this fall. Uh, the pandemic has thrown a wrench in some of those plans because uh, obviously people are being encouraged to stay home, request mail-in ballots when those ballots are available. And some states you see now are looking at the possibility of internet voting for or some of, at least some of those voters uh, as a way of protecting them from the dangers of going into a polling place. You know, there's got you got states like Delaware, New Jersey, West Virginia. They've all announced plans to allow some disabled voters to cast their ballots online in the coming weeks. And despite experts really urging state leaders to avoid online voting, do these states have any sort of a secure platform for voting? And why are the experts really so concerned? One of the reasons they're concerned is because we haven't really had a lot of opportunity to test these platforms. Uh, security experts typically want to have several years of independent testing, which is to say not just letting the company uh, attest to the security of the product itself. Uh, and these experts have gotten a look at some of the platforms out there, uh, including one that West Virginia used to use. It used it in 2018. It's called Votes. And they found a lot of flaws in that product. Uh, and this year, West Virginia will be using a different product called Democracy Live, which hasn't seen the kind of outside scrutiny that experts typically like to see. So right now, uh, we don't really know exactly how secure these platforms are. And that's part of the problem. Eric, since we don't know how secure these online platforms are, is there a sense of how you could tell by the time, let's say, I'm casting my vote online, is there a way to make sure that the way I voted is exactly how it goes down and that it's not altered in the, in the process of transmission? That's a great question. So people like to say, if we can bank online, why can't we vote online? And one of the reasons it's different is because uh, unless you voluntarily give up your privacy of the secret ballot, there's no way for you to be sure. Because if I ask you how you voted so I can make sure your vote came in correctly, I'm violating your privacy. And these systems are designed to separate your identity from your vote. So unlike with a bank where you can refund a fraudulent transaction by proving that you didn't make it, by proving that you're not in another country right now, we don't have those types of mechanisms for voting because we have to separate the identity from the vote. So... In the end, Eric, what do you believe is really the most secure method for voting, especially as we look towards the next few months? We're in the middle of this pandemic and Election Day hits in November. Well, right now, the consensus is the best thing to do is to use paper ballots, uh, which are impervious to hacking. They can get lost. They can get marked up on an individual basis. But there's no way to do the kind of mass tampering uh, that experts are very concerned about. So paper ballots, preferably marked by hand rather than a computer, that's what most experts tell me is typically the best thing to do. But obviously, right now, we're not really in a position where everybody can do that. And it's dangerous to send people out to polling places. So that's why you see a lot of interest in mail-in balloting at the moment. All right, Eric Geller, grateful you could join us to talk about online voting. Thank you again. Thank you.